Hi you guys, my name is Tamika, this is my channel Tamika Bloated, and I am more than elated to talk to you guys about the Smexy A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. This is the most talked about book of 2015, well until a sequel came out in 2016. It goes without saying that I've got a lot to say about this book. The first half of this review will be spoiler free, while the second half may contain a few major plot points, but I will let you know when that begins just in case you haven't read this yet. So what is this book about? This is a fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast, where we have both humans and fae who live among each other divided by a wall. A human realm and a magical realm divided by a wall? I wonder where I may have heard that before. Oh, I wonder. Even though they are divided by a wall, humans and Fae both live under a peace treaty where they aren't to harm each other. Feyre, our unsuspected heroine, is hunting out in the woods near the wall, which is forbidden anyway. And she comes across an animal whom she suspects may or may not be Fae, but she kills it anyway. Later on that evening, she gets a knock at the door and a huge beast comes in to let her know that they know of her crime of killing Fay, and that she is sentenced to live out in the Fay world for the remainder of her days. Once she gets to the Fay lands, she learns that her captor is not just a beast, but a man who is trapped under a curse. So now the question is, what is the curse? Who cursed them? And how can we break it? Therein lies our story. I've read this book twice now, and I've now rated it four out of five stars. Initially, I wanted to give it a two. At one point, I wanted to give it a three. Shoot, I said, maybe it's a five. Maybe it's a five star book. But finally, I've settled on four to five stars, and I will stay true to this rating. And now, let's talk about this book. If you have not read the book, I would say stop now. You now know that I, I love this book, 4 out of 5 stars, you know what it's about. If that is not enough to interest you into reading this book, I really, really don't want to ruin it for you. I hated this book and loved this book all at the same time. But again, if you're not prepared for a couple of, couple of spoiler points, then I suggest you stop the video now and make your decision if you're going to read it or not. I highly suggest you do, but it really is up to you. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull a pole and you're gonna click like that eye area at the top and you're gonna let me know out of the choices who was the dumbest character from a fairy tale. So please look below. And if you can't see it up here, I'm gonna also um, put the question down below. I'm gonna give you a couple of options. And so if you can't vote up there, please let me know down in the description box. And I would love to know why you chose who you chose, but if you just put down a name, that's fine too. But yeah. Who is the dumbest heroine you have ever had to deal with? Who made the worst choices? <laughs> because Farah made some horrible choices as a heroine and I have problems with that. All right, if you stayed along, that means you probably have read this or you don't give two craps and you just wanna hear someone else's opinion on this talked about book. Well, you guys, I'm gonna get right into it. The first, fourth of this book is trash. Hated it. Hey, baby. With the most you can hate in a book. I mean, to the point where I was like, should I even continue with this? This is horrible. What is this book about? It's so bad. And you're really like, what are you talking about? It's, it's not so much that the writing is bad. It's just that the story is so uncaptivating. I mean, everybody is horrible in their own right. It's like, am I supposed to like these people? Should I care that something terrible is going to happen to them? Shoot, I want to kill them. <laughs> I mean, that's how you feel about the first fourth of the book. Vera, the dumbest heroine of all time. Like, just dumb. And, and did you read along, right? You find out that, you know, she can't read either. So you're like, ah, 
extra dumb. And, <laughs> and then when given the chance to learn to read, it's like, I'm not gonna tell people I can't read because I don't want people to know my weaknesses. Dumb! Like, he was just like, dumb, dumb, this chick's dumb, dumb, dumb. This chick's dumb. Why do I have to follow this woman? She's such an idiot. First fourth of the book is real boring. You learn about Farah. I mean, yeah, she kills a beast, animal, whatever. We don't know if it's Faye or not at this point. And then, like, she has, like, this strange sexual, you know, best friend with benefits relationship with some dude that we'll never hear about ever again. So there's no point in learning his name. I just cracked up when Sarah J. Mass called it a contraceptive potion. Yeah. What is happening in this book? What is the point of knowing that she's having meaningless sex with this guy? Like, I guess it was trying to show some realness because, you know, people do that today. But I just felt like for the story, I just didn't see, like, the point. It Nothing grew for me from knowing that information. Just learning about her family, I think, would have been enough to explain the type of person she was. So I just didn't understand that relationship. It would have been different if he was like a love interest or something like that, but he's not. Like he's really like a very useless character and a useless part of the scene. So I just, I was just done at that point. Like, oh, is, it, is this what I'm gonna be in for? Unnecessariness, ridiculousness, grossness. And then she was whiny, but it's like, she had horrible family members. So I kind of got why she was upset and whiny. Like, I was just like, why do you do so much for these horrible people? Like, I just, I just didn't get it, <laughs> okay? I couldn't relate. And then she finally gets, we're talking about maybe two fourths of the book now. We're finally in the Fae world and we're getting to learn about the different characters. We're learning about Tamlin, who is this, this guy who's like over this kingdom. He's supposed to be this great guy of the spring court but they're under this curse. A curse we're still not quite sure about. We know what's there. We read the synopsis. We know something's here, okay? You're learning about all these different creatures that inhabit this world. She's making friends and being an enemy to everyone else. And it's just absolutely boring, right? You're just like, really don't want to learn more about this girl but at least you know we're getting a little bit of action that's pretty much what's happening in the second half of this book right so now we have the party the party that begins everything okay and this is when the book picks up when i read this the second time i actually skipped um the first fourth of the book i went straight into maybe <clears throat> a few chapters or so before this party starts right so the party starts and then we get the rest of the characters that matter you know we find about the, the queen of the fey lands who shouldn't be even a queen but she deemed herself that way we get resand who is the king of the night court um, but the number one side person to this evil queen and they're trying to hide her as a human and it's like well if she like killed somebody like why are y'all protecting her like that it was just so many unanswered questions at this time and then feelings started happening and then we get into the thing that people are disgusted with which is when Tamlin was overcame by his wild senses and he bites Farah and people are just oh gosh so upset about it so upset about it and I get if you're upset about it and that's fine to each his own but from a person who reads uh an insane amount of erotica is like enjoying you know the smexiness of this book and Sarah J Mask if she lost most of smexiness and so it, it depends on where you're coming from and I would rate this book as new adult I don't know why um, you would even find this book in the young adult section. Like, I just, I couldn't tell you. If you loved, um, the Throne of Glass series and you love that tension that she had with, um, her two love interests, you're gonna go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs for the tension that Farrah has with Tamlin. If you are sensitive to... Ferris character and how she is. I mean, as a feminist point of view, I can see the reason why you would totally be offended by this book because she's just not that character. Like, she's not the character where you're like, man, I love my kids to grow up to be like her. Like, nah, she makes, she's dumb. She is dumb. Moving on, 
What I loved about this story, why did this book get a four out of five from me? Well, the first thing is that I really did love this world. I found this world to be very interesting. I can look at the map of this world over and over again. I love night and day, spring, winter, fall. I love all the different courts. I mean, it's and it's just so interesting to learn about these worlds. Now, you don't get to see them all in this book, but you get enough to be enthralled to want to learn about the rest of them. And that's something that I really like. I like that the characters had such rich histories. Yeah, Pharaoh was a douche. And I'm like, yeah, Pharaoh was an idiot, but Pharaoh did come from a very very hardcore background with having lost her mother having been rich and no longer rich and having to be one of the youngest but yet is the one who's protecting her family i mean you she gives you mass gives you so much background out of every character okay even down to the maid and you find out about her sons you know you really she really wants you to have some kind of relationships with the characters I didn't like a lot of them regardless of their backgrounds however the ones that I did pulled me in okay and I was enthralled with this curse I just didn't you know I wanted to know more about it I wanted to see how it was gonna get broken and I love the fact that we were in a situation where it could have gotten broken and it didn't it's it's I'm not gonna say it's rare but usually when someone's on a mission to do something nine times out of ten somehow way the mission works and in this situation it was like yeah we have this deadline not only did you miss the deadline you sucked at even trying to fix it. And it, and it was just one of those things where it gives you that feeling like, you know, as people, we fail so often <laughs> that we feel like giving up and that there's no hope. But the one thing that this book did give that I thought was absolutely positive was the fact that if you don't succeed, try, try again. <laughs> it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. And I really like that message of there is more than one way to solve a problem. And that if you have determination and you have heart, you can overcome anything. And that's something that I got out of this book. Hence the reason why I really liked it. And I really liked it Fair's resolve. I feel like she redeemed herself as a, as a ridiculous character by the end. I love the fact that she giving what I will call a second chance at life and rebirth and that's just something that we as people can also take in we don't have to go through the things that maybe our main character had to go through but in our own lives we all have our trials and tribulations we all have our obstacles and we've all skid our knee and we've all had to get up and just wipe it off and I felt like this book was a great reminder of our own personal resolve and what we can do and how we can make our own futures if we just push forward you know everything living life on a dream that's what I'm trying to do you guys life on a dream. that's the reason why I have read the second book and I will have that review up and that review is gonna be magical because let me tell you let me tell you bananas I gave this book four out of five stars I thoroughly enjoyed a court of thorns and roses that second time around and I am definitely going to say, go with it. Just go read it. Give it a chance. Get through that first fourth of the book. And I promise you, I promise you, Sarah J. Mass does not leave you empty-handed come the end of the book. She wraps it all up in a beautiful bow. And I would love to know if you've read it, how did you feel about it down below? If you haven't read it, will you read it? So anyway, as you always, I will see you on the next video. I love y'all so much. See y'all next time. Bye.